Guess that haircut didn't happen. Hi, I'm John and this is my vlog and today let's talk more about getting into board games. So a while ago, I don't remember when, I made a video about how to get into playing interesting board games that aren't just Monopoly and Risk. I'll put a link to that video down in that description thing. And today I kind of wanted to do part two of that discussion. In that video, I say that the biggest concern should be the number of players in a game, how long it takes to play it, and if the theme of that game interests you. And I stand by that. Those should be your biggest concerns. But sometimes, when you're looking at descriptions of these games, you may see some terminology about the gameplay mechanics that you're like, hmm, I don't know what that means. I'd really like to know before I spend my money on this. So today, I wanted to make a sort of glossary of board game terms video. I made a list of the most common non-obvious terms that you'll see when looking at board and also card games to help you when you're searching out a game you want to play. Let's start with some of the easier ones. There's a large amount of cooperative games nowadays, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's games where instead of the players competing against each other, they're working together against the game itself. But lately, there's been a large trend towards semi-cooperative games. This most often takes the shape of a trader mechanic, wherein everyone's working together, but really one or more players actually working against the others. You see this in the Battlestar Galactica board game, where some of the characters are secretly Cylons trying to sabotage the human players. But this has been taking a whole bunch of new shapes, wherein everyone's working together, but people win or lose as individuals. Either one person is declared the most winner, or everyone has their own objective they have to complete in addition to the main objective. Cooperative play is not nearly as simple as it seems, be sure to look for those semi-cooperative words. Phrases like storytelling or thematic tend to mean that the game involves a emergent narrative from the gameplay. This game, Android, is a pretty good example of that. In playing the game, you develop the story of the people trying to solve the crime. I really like these kinds of games. Often coupled with, but not necessarily confused, is the term role-playing. This doesn't always mean you have to be playing the role or acting in character if you're not interested in it. It more means that these games feature some of the aspects of role-playing video games, like character development, leveling up, those types of things. Let's talk card games for a second. A collectible card game is a game like Magic. It's a game where you build your deck by getting a bunch of different booster packs and groups of cards that you can put together to build your own personal deck. This shouldn't be confused with a deck building game, which is normally a standalone title. In a deck building game, you start off with a small constant deck of cards, but spend some kind of resource to gather new cards for your deck to use in the game. Dominion is the daddy of all of these games and the most pure example. There's also new Marvel and DC themed deck building games if you're interested in those characters and licenses. Often these deck building games involve aspects of card drafting. That's where everyone has access to a group of cards and you one at a time choose which cards you're gonna take, sometimes blocking other characters from choosing that card. Card drafting can also show up in board games like Ticket to Ride. In Ticket to Ride there's colored train cards that are visible to all the players and you can try to pick one up before another opponent can. Very common these days are modular boards. You can see this very obviously in Settlers of Catan. This is games where the boards are made up of individual pieces that are randomized each game you play. A worker placement game is a game where thematically you're in control of a group of workers that you send to do different tasks. These games often limit the number of workers that can be doing any given task, so that a lot of the game is trying to get your workers in places before your opponents can. On Will Wheaton's tabletop show, they played Lords of Waterdeep. This is a pretty pure worker placement game. If you see talk of action point allowances, that's where the game gives you so many points for a turn, for instance maybe four, that you can use to do different actions. Like you can move for a point, or you can attack an enemy for a point, or you can explore a tile for a point. It's different depending on what game you're playing. A miniatures game involves small figures. This can sometimes be in service of a different board game. One of my favorite games, Mice and Mystics, gives you a little figure that you move around the board. Or it can be a pure miniature game, like a war game. There's a great Star Wars X-Wing miniatures game that's very popular right now. These typically involve moving miniatures around a battlefield to fight opponents. And one more, a 4X game is a term borrowed from strategy computer games. The X's are explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. You look at new territory, expand your empire into this new territory, use the resources you find there, and then fight your opponents. Often board games that are 4X games are adaptations of the strategy computer games. For instance, Sid Meier's Civilization has a 4X board game version. And there, I just threw a lot of terms at you, but don't be overwhelmed. As I've said, the best way to get into board games is to find something that thematically excites you. If you're really into Lovecraft, play Arkham Horror. If you're really into Battlestar Galactica, the TV show, why not try Battlestar Galactica, the board game? I wouldn't think of this stuff where you're just trying out a random board game to get into strategy board gaming in general. 
But as you start to expand your knowledge of board gaming, knowing what different mechanics you like will help you find new board games you want to play. But if you want to be a person who plays games just because you think the art's pretty, that's cool too. I made a video that wasn't just me rambling about my life. Subscribe if you want to see more videos with my face in them. Comment with any other fun terms you know from board games. And it'd be really cool if you liked this video. That's the end. Okay, bye.